Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to add an external reference, which is just going to be an image, and some of the basics with uh, layers. Uh, the reason why we have to do a full external reference is that the web-based version does not just let you copy and paste an image. Uh, if you are using the full version and you got access to it, uh, you can just control C, control V, and copy and paste in the image that you've Google searched or whatever can just be placed right in your model space. Uh, since we're on the web version, I'm going to show you what you need to do to get an image on there. And this is so that we can laser cut. So, I've uh, already started this. This is uh, attempt number like four at this. Crashed on me. So if it crashes on you, I understand. But I call this laser cut. I've already image searched. I'm going to do Batman logo. So what you need to do is uh, save the image. So right click. Save image as, right? Save it in a folder that you'll have access to on your Chromebooks, wherever it saves it to. Download it, whatever you need to do so that it's in a folder. I saved it just to my desktop just to make it real easy to find. Uh, external reference. External reference is your xref. You're going to attach. I already loaded this in. You're going to go to upload, find your image, and load it in. I've already done this. All right attach it in again just to explain what i did i hit upload and i went to the folder that it was saved in i chose it it uploaded it and then you have to actually check it off and attach where is it there's an error no you just have to click i thought there was an error as well it does need to be a png or a jpeg i believe for you to actually be able to have this um on in autocad i should say now, the next thing is you want to differentiate between uh, a laser cut line, where it's actually going to cut through the material and cut through the shape, or an engrave, which some of those examples in class you saw, where it doesn't cut through the whole thing, it just shows, you know, engraved onto it. Uh, what you need to do for that is you need to start making layers, they're called. And layers are, a way to think of them, are uh, different line types you might say when we start going into all the different line types will be more apparent but just like i'm saying right now a cut line and an engraved line those are going to be two different types of layers or two different types of lines that the laser engraver can make so believe it or not we are going to make two new layers and they're going to be called cut and engrave everything you type in this class should be capitalized it's just a standard with technical drawings there's no confusion on lettering. Everything's just capitalized. Over here on the side here is, um, well, first of all, you already have two other layers in here. You have the zero layer, which is your object layer, which is where you first load in. It's your basic layer. Most of the stuff you'll draw will be there. And this image that I loaded in was already on that layer because that's the layer that was loaded in. Def points, don't worry about. We're never really going to use. But we just added the cut and engrave. Now I'm actually going to change the colors that was a box on the side. The reason being is I want to be able to differentiate between them, all right? And if all the lines are all the same color, I'm not going to be able to tell the difference. You also notice that this is shown white, but when I draw a line, oh, it is white. But when I go to print it, it'll be black, right? That's the difference between uh, layout space and model space. I guess I really, I don't, not important. Cut line, engrave line, I made green. I'm going to be on my cut layer because that's the first thing I'm going to do is going to trace the outline of the shape so I can laser cut it. One other thing I want you to note here on your layers tab is that you can turn on and off the layers, right? It's that little light bulb with a line going through it. That's how you would turn off the layer. But I'm, I'm going to be in my cut layer. Um, there's a lot of things missing from the web version I'm finding and trying to draw this stuff. Uh, there's no ellipse and there's only one type of arc and there's that no copy and paste. But we're gonna make it work, all right? So I have my O snap on, I'm gonna turn polar on. I'm going to split this in half and I'm gonna show you again the mirror and all that fun stuff. So midpoint snap line is a triangle, drag down. You'll notice it went right through the middle. Enter, enter to get out, enter to repeat, enter. There it is. That pretty much looks like it's a middle image. It's not perfect, so when I do this mirror thing, it's uh, gonna show it as being a little off. That's okay. This doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I noticed I tried doing this with an arc and just getting the arc on the side. 
Will it work, wait for it, if I do it like this? No, no it will not. But wait, I could have, wait a second, wait a second. I got an idea here, I know I'm in the middle of the video and I'm just trying to figure stuff out on the web version, sorry. If I go here like this and then if I hit tab, I can adjust the angle and I want it to be less. Oh, no, definitely not it, right? Arc's not gonna work. If you have the full version of AutoCAD, it does. You can change the dark type. So since we, I don't, or I do, but I'm drawing on the web version, I'm going to choose spline. Spline is a line where AutoCAD is going to automatically start figuring out the curve between the two points. Click a bunch of times to actually physically trace. And say you're not doing a smooth curve like this, you're still going to want to use a spline. Spline is probably what you're going to want to be using for this assignment. You'll notice here it's going, my snap setting is popping up. The nearest snap is there. Just go and turn off your object snap and polar, look, it was snapping to polar. Turn off both of those when you're doing this tracing with the spline. Otherwise, it'll mess something up. I'm zooming in, zooming in, and then now, now I'm gonna turn the object snap back on. Click to there and look, it's all funny and stuff. Just hit enter. Oh, that last part looks bad. I think I can just choose that one, yeah, and move that around. Turn my object snap back off. That just looked funny there. That looks more better. All right, so I have that line there. I'm just going to turn this off just so you can see it easier and what I'm doing. I want this to go in all four quadrants. What's that command I can use? I can just use the mirror command. So, whoops, I'm in a spline still. I'm gonna highlight this. I did the green highlight, right? I'm gonna choose mirror. It's asking me for my mirror line. I'm gonna turn my object snap back on so I can actually choose endpoint. Do endpoint, look at that. I'm gonna hit Whoopsies, not escape, I'm used to that, that was wrong. Do it again, highlight, mirror, go there, enter, highlight, highlight, hold shift when you're highlighting to get both, mirror, here to here, to here, enter, there it is. I want to highlight, hold shift, highlight, 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 I want this all to be one object. I'm gonna type in the word join, so it's all one. Enter, now we're all one. Look at that, good job. Turn that back on. There's the outline, it's pretty close all the way around. Close enough, I'm gonna delete this now. Yep, and say I want to laser engrave the uh, black part of this image, right? Uh, to do that, I'm gonna to switch to my engrave line now. I'm in engrave, that's great. I want to get to that part of, um, I shouldn't have deleted. Get those lines back. There they are. I want these still. I lied. Um, I want to offset this line is what it's called, right? So if I go to my engrave layer, I go to offset. I'm going to choose this object and I'm going to bring it in here. It's going to offset as the wrong thing. You'll look on the top. It's kind of wrong. Maybe I don't want it that tight. Maybe I want it to look like this. It's equal on both sides, I'm gonna click there, All right? I chose engrave and it didn't do that, why? Because I was already offsetting a drawing part or line type that was already uh, in the drawing. So if I now click on this line here, it's four separate things, shift, click, shift, click, shift, click, join, enter. If you go to properties now, why is it wrong? Oh, because I didn't have the line highlighted. Ha <laughs> ha. Change the uh, layer right here. So I'm in the properties tab, engrave. Now we're red. It's going to be part of my engrave part. And look, this crashed on me. I didn't save it. Save before you hatch. We're about to hatch. Hatching makes things go funny. Save. Save again. Make sure it's saving. Q save. Hotkey for save is Q. Quick save. Save before you hatch. Go to draw. Hatch. Make sure you're in your engrave layer. Click on hatch. Hatch is asking you to choose an internal point. This is an internal point in between 
closed and closed. There you go. It's actually only choosing the top part. I'm hitting escape real quick. Now I want to delete these things. because I want that full circle around. One more time, hatch, click here. See how it's like dotted line-ish? I'm going to hit enter. We haven't crashed. That's a plus. I need to change the hatch type though now. I'm going to click. Click on hatch, delete these points, delete, save again, save, saved, hatch, click on the point, hit enter, there's the hatch, click on the hatch, and crash again. Apparently, it does not want us to change our hatch. This is the third time now. I don't know why. I don't get it. Leave it alone. Don't even put the hatch in. We're gonna hatch it later. When we have full computers, we do the engrave, we'll get the hatch. I don't know why it's not working. I don't know why. But you should just be finding an image that you want to laser engrave, laser cut, and start tracing things. Stick to just the cut layer and engrave layer of actual lines. So one more time here. What if I turn off the PNG image and do the hatch? One last attempt, one last attempt. Hit enter. <gasps> it worked. Maybe that was it. Turn off that layer with the image on it. Yeah, I don't know. Go down here to uh, properties of the hatch, right? I clicked on the hatch because that's not a solid hatch. Under pattern name, choose solid. There it is. We did it. Good work, team. Save that. Save it. Let's go back to our layers real quick. There it is. It's on there. And then just continue with what you're doing. But obviously, do the hatch till the end. Save the hatch till the end. I just want to show you an example. Save, show you an example of a finished one that I did and what we'll eventually be doing something like. I drew, I traced an elephant. Uh, we're gonna do a little mobile project here. But I put the picture on a different layer. There you go. I didn't want the monkey, I just wanted the elephant. And the green line, right, is my cut line. It's gonna cut out that shape. These don't have to be here anymore. Cut out the shape while the red is what's actually going to be engraved and we'll do a little engraving line look there's the hatch it colored that in of um the elephant here right of my engraved layer all right so again you are finding an image you're loading it in there you're tracing it and then um uh, we can laser engrave it out once you get the full uh size of it all right, the full image that you want. All right, that's it. Quick, screwed up only a few times. It's okay, doing this live, one take, and by one take, I mean four takes, and AutoCAD web, uh, you know, gonna make it work. Gonna be okay. All right, don't forget to save. Save, often, always, and save your hatching till last. All right, good luck.